Hey, what's going on? In this tutorial, we're going to be talking about containers for Material UI. So let's just go ahead and get started and make a container. So um, if you're wondering what's in my pack is JSON and so far how it affects your app, it's posted below the versions that I think are most relevant for you, you, to, for you to use. But let's come in here and do import container from, there we go. And so let's come in here and make a container. We're going to put some content in here. And so it doesn't look very special right now, and, and that's fine. A container, all it really does is like center your content and kind of keep it together as you go from you know a, a landscape to a portrait mode and vice versa. And there's some interesting things that we could do here. So let's come in here and let's do this. Let's give it a style. Background color, and then let's make that equal to, um, let's just do blue. I hope we got an error in here. Oh, there we go. My bad. Sometimes when you're jumping in and out between work and then you do this, you forget some of the syntax, but it's no problem. So what we see here is we have the container. All right, cool, awesome, no big deal. But let's come in here and let me show you first Fluid. Now Fluid is kind of interesting because what it does is as you expand the screen and you want to move it around, you could it'll adjust up to a certain point um, easily for you. So we could do max width, come up in here, and then let's do uh, extra small here. So as we come in, we could see that at the top of there, my dog's name is Bernie, see to a point, see it's almost like it'll stretch out and kind of hang out with it, but then it, it loses this point. That means it's uh, out of its bounds because out of the extra small. So let's do large here. And you see that it will, in a very fluid manner, fill it until it hits the, what is considered its extra large bounds right here. And then after that, it's just sitting centered nicely in here, which is kind of cool. And so what I figured on most devices, you'll want to have like a large or maybe Dependent upon if you have very very specific, you know, tablet or phone views, you know, you could dynamically switch this out for whatever your content is. But this is kind of a nice thing to know because, as you can see, it just easily glides along and resizes your content up to that point that you need it, which is really cool. And so there's another way that we could work with this, and that is we can make it fixed. And fixed is um, it's okay. I don't know if I would ever want to use fixed, but it's there just in case. And so we could put fixed in here, and what we could see is, just like with the fluid measures, there we go. It's kind of like my dog learning uh, how to walk. You have to drag it for a while, and then, oh, well at this point it doesn't follow, it only goes so big. But we could see that it, it kind of snaps just as it kind of needs to, whereas with the fluid motion, it just follows along with it up to a given point. And let's come in here and let's inspect element. I may need to switch out edge here for something actually a lot better. You know, I'm just going to go ahead and do that. Give me one moment here. All right, let me slap this in. And here we go. Let's go ahead and take this out. Let's go and inspect the element here. And so what we see with this container, even if it's on fixed right now, and we know that it you know kind of snaps at the last second here, one thing we could do is we could also rotate it from the portrait to landscape view. And so even if we come up in here and do, you know, max width what we had before and let's just do 
I think MD is for medium. Yeah, my autocorrect sends it to that. That it's still in a very, you know, it's not being drugged, so it's not, I imagine it's more useful in the desktop at that point. But we can see it just appears where it needs to um, on these different kind of views here. So let's go to iPad. Let me drag this out a little bit. We'll rotate it. And yeah, it just takes all that content that's in there and, you know, centers it between, you know, these two points out here and keeps it all within. And so, yeah, that's pretty much containers. All right, so in this section, we're going to be talking about grids. Grids, kind of like containers, are ways that you could, um, rather than a container probably being for a whole app, with a grid, what you could do is you could have parent grids and then nested grids. And there are interesting ways to organize your information on the page. So sometimes you have, you know, you want two things side by side. And so it's a way for you to allocate that information, that text, those images, those videos side by side and organize them in a nice, easy manner. And it also uses uh, the CSS, CSS Flexbox as well, which is nice. So let's go ahead, go ahead and start making these. Let's go ahead and make a container here and I think it'll just be easiest to show this here then. Alrighty, cool. So then let's come into here and let's make two more grids to show. We'll copy and paste that because we're lazy. And because I think it's easier to do with the styles. Uh, I don't know what to use. Let's use an ugly color. I'm not submitting this to any competition here. So you see, I need a beer. I need another paycheck. And these are coexisting on the same line right now because we're not telling anything explicitly here that you know one thing needs to take up an entire line here or that we need to separate them. So one way to do that is let's come in here, and this is something common I see. And let's just give the first one um, on sizes um, extra small and going up that this takes up twelve. And so we see here that this necessarily shoves everything on over. And you could tell the difference here because look, this entire line uh, is reserved by this H1 element here saying I need a beer. And this one down here still has, you know, it looks like about 50% taken up there. But another item can coexist on here because we allow it to. So let's come into here and let's just do. And we can see that we did in fact extend this here. And that's pretty cool. So now that we know how to share stuff on a line or we want to use one element to take up an entire line, what if we wanted to work on the spacing between these two things? Say we wanted uh, you know, more padding and more of a gap in between there. How do we do that? And that's pretty easy. So we'd go up to the parent grid up here. We'd come in and it's automatically at two. And it only goes from I believe 0 or 1 to 10 inclusively. So if we wanted to do this, I don't think that makes much of a difference here, but let's do something dramatic using 10. Oh, that really throws it off right there. Oh, and I think the reason why is that we have to come in here, and my bad, and that for any child, you're going to need to make that, um, if I could spell here, as an item. There we go. And so what you have here is that you have an item, two item grids, and a container grid. So anytime you see item, think child, and you see container, you think parent. And this 10 now is enforcing the uh, 10 spacing gap between these two. So let's go in and not screw this up. 
and we see now that at zero, this is the smallest gap that this could produce. You could go in and write your own styles to maybe force this on up, but this is what's happening out of the gate. So this here at two is kind of naturally how things work and fit there. But if you wanted to do eight, this is how the gap would look. And that's how spacing works with material UI grids. All right, so in this part, what we're gonna be looking at is how you could use like the parent grid element and you could, I wouldn't say stylize, maybe the stylizing, you could just move around the child elements here so the items. So you notice that in the last section, I believe, I don't record these all in one day, you have the extra small 12 or whatever it is we had or whatever it is you may have. And you could say, hey, you know, this I need a beer takes up the entire, you know, row right here. And that's fine. You could totally do that. But if you wanted to, you could come up here into the parent grid, as long as you make sure you have the container in there, because that's necessary for this. You could come in here and you could do something like give this row, let's just go to the center. You go to the documentation and see this and play with it yourself. But you know, this is kind of um, a tutorial here. So I kind of want to show you some of the cool things I think you could do with this. So you come in here and this is a row, obviously it's still a row and the items and then the uh, justification is all center. All right, fine, whatever. But this is kind of where the power I think is super cool. We could actually flip these around. And so we could see that I need another paycheck uh, is now moved before I need a beer, which is awesome because say you want to, I don't know, make a game, um, you're using API and you're getting a lot of information and you want to have the user toggle what they're seeing, this is cool because you don't have to like logically go through and write out what that looks like. This is kind of baked in for you. And so another thing you could do with the direction is you could do column. Actually, that's wrong. And then you could also see column reverse, which is pretty cool. So you could flip these up uh, side down columnize them and that's just awesome because if you think about the work that you would have to do in order to pull this off maybe for some of y'all you know you're like the you know top 0.001 percent of developers and you just like sneeze code and you're married to like a, a large computer or a server or something like that but for the rest of us you know me included this is kind of neat that you could just kind of pull this off and when your boss is like hey could you you know flip these items around or I have a whole list of things down here could you easily make them um, toggleable I guess would be the business term for that you could do stuff like that which is pretty cool another thing you could do is you could with the justify you could go to and I may have to change the column here but you could do space between and it does nothing, but if we were to come back here into row, we would see that there's a gap between here, which is awesome. We could also do something and justify like space around, which puts gaps all the way around. And then there's space evenly. So every space here is, um, you know, evenly, it's the same value, which is neat. And so align items, we could do things like stretch you're not going to see it there the the material ui example in the docs is kind of cool because it kind of shows you a very robust way of using these but if we were just to do column we see what stretch does now um so rather than go in here and do the excess equals 12 if i wanted to and not have you know just a ton of the attributes in here i could say all right i know for a fact that all these are just going to be boom, 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 a list going down. Let's just, you know, space these guys evenly out or however you want to do that. I want them as a column, which would mean a list. And then I just want to stretch them so they take up the entire, you know, row, which is cool because then you don't have to go in and type this, you know, for every single one, which is awesome. And that is um, doing the kind of the interactive portion. I mean, it's very light compared to what the material UI example is, but Sometimes I think it's a little too robust and this is kind of a for dummies uh, introduction to it, but uh, leave some comments, suggestions. If you have any other you know, uh, recommendations or requests, let me know.